Okay, did anyone think it was not going to be Krillin? Did anyone think that Krillin was not going to be the first member of Universe 7 to bite the dust? Actually, there were. Me, for one! You fooled me, Toei! Good job! Good job! You, you did great there. I... I didn't think it was gonna be him, because I think that was like the safe bet, you know? That was just kinda like, you know, you have ten warriors, which one's gonna go first? Oh, well, it's gonna be Krillin, you know? I, I thought they were gonna fool us for a loop, I thought it was gonna be like Piccolo or something. Okay, look, before we get into Dragon Ball Super Episode 99, we have to have a little bit of a talk about Krillin, okay? We need to have a little bit of a prologue about the Krill dog, alright? What the fuck are you trying to do with Krillin in Dragon Ball Super Toei? What, what are you trying to do with him? I need to ask, I need to ask, because when you have an entire episode, uh, this, is, this was a while back, you know, when Goku was gathering all the warriors of Universe 7 and we had the episode dedicated to Krillin, you know, we had a whole episode dedicated to his growth as a character, um, how he shouldn't be looked on as weak or pitiful, he's actually pretty strong, and in that same episode, we had a scene where Goku goes, Super Saiyan God Blue! And then launches a Kamehameha right at the little bald son of a bitch. And he manages to resist that for a little bit. Okay, Toei, when you start writing checks like that, when you're writing a fucking check like that, I expect that to be fucking cashed, alright? Now look, obviously that doesn't mean that Krillin is on the same level as Super Saiyan God. Obviously it doesn't. But I'll say the same thing I said back in that episode. I can't remember if I reviewed that episode, but if I did not talk about that episode, this was my thoughts on it, alright? If you wanted to show that Krillin was strong, you know, you didn't have to go the overkill route of doing Super Saiyan Blue on the kid, you know? It could have easily been Super Saiyan 2, Kamehameha, and if Krillin resisted that, I would have been fine with that. I would have been like, all right, he managed to resist a blast from Super Saiyan 2. The same form which was able to take down Cell. All right? I'd be all right with that. Super Saiyan 3, pushing it a little bit. Super Saiyan God, all right, now you're just trying to, now you're just fucking with us. All right, now you're just starting to fool us around, okay? But you know what? If they were at least consistent with it, I'd be fine with that, you know? I'd be fine with that, a little bit. Like, if they were like, alright, we showed Krillin managing to resist a Super Saiyan God Blue Kamehameha wave at least a little bit. Therefore, we're gonna actually have him be pretty, pretty prominent in the tournament. And, you know, to be fair, in this episode, him and 18 managed to take out quite a few members of other tournaments. Well, I mean, other, other teams. We see them take out, uh... A member of Universe 10, the bird guy. Well, rather, uh, Krillin and Master Roshi really have that one. Krillin does the, the Kienzong times three, and then Master Roshi follows that up with a Kamehameha, and that blasts the bird guy off. So yeah, the two people, that, that's ironic, the two people from Universe 10 that were actually allowed to fly, they get out almost immediately. Um, and then Krillin and, and, and 18, they team up to take out some members of Universe 4, uh, they take out this blind fox dude. They also take out of this, like, this really strong dude, like, typical, you know, buff guy. They manage to take them out. And I'm like, alright, we're looking good. Where's the fall gonna be? Because I'm looking for it. Because this episode, man, Krillin and 18, man, they're kicking ass. They, they did the thing that I hate. You know what the thing I hate is? This is the thing I hate. Hey, guys! This is a main character, we have to have him in the spotlight. Alright, here's an episode, he has a whole episode to himself where he's in the spotlight. Okay, episode's over, he's gone. I hate it when they do that shit, man. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. They do that all the time where it's like, alright, we have this character, he hasn't had a lot of spotlight. We'll give him the spotlight, we'll, we'll give him a whole one episode of spotlight. And then he's gotta go bye-bye, we have to have room for other people now. You can't say we didn't give him anything, you know? Oh man, make up your mind. Make up your mind. He's either he's either a pretty he, he's either stronger than everybody thinks he is, or he's like meh. You can't have both. I'm sorry, you just can't. Now, to be fair, the reason Krillin got knocked out was not because of his lack of strength. It was because of his lack of paying the fuck attention to what was going around around him. He got a little bit too cocky. And, uh, ended up, you know, getting his, off his guard, doing the victory post shit, and he ended up getting shit-kicked by Frost off the freaking fighting stage. 
Um, and by the way, it's also very ironic that it ended up being Frost was the one that actually knocked him out, considering what happened with Frieza before, yeah. Well, at least I guess Frost was nice. He didn't blow up Krillin, so that's good. Um, here's my rebuttal to that. That makes it fucking worse! That makes it worse when you have an entire episode! You know what, guys? Quit looking down on me. I'm strong. I've been training. I got some tricks up my sleeve. Oh, wait, I wasn't paying attention. Wait, what? Oh, shit, done. That makes it worse, does it not? It would, I would have been okay if Krillin, you know, like, um, I don't know. We're not even talking about a strong person. I'm talking like, I don't know, like, um, like Magetta from Universe 6. Or, uh, one of the dudes from Universe 10. Or, I'm trying to think of somebody that we know about but isn't, like, super, super strong. You know what I mean? Um... You know, if it was, like, somebody like that, though, that showed up and started fighting against Krillin, and it, let, let's just use Magetta for an example, you know, okay, Magetta, not that strong of a dude, but still pretty, you know, pretty t difficult to fight. If it was, like, a beam struggle between him and Magetta, and it ends up Krillin getting knocked off, you know, he's, he's legitimately trying his best, and it still fails him, like, he legitimately is trying his best, and he comes up short, I'd be like, alright, at least, at least he gave it, at least he gave it his all. In this episode, it was just like, yeah, we're gonna show how badass Krillin is! Oh, but, you know, he lacks paying attention, so, you know, he, he loses. Um, even if you were gonna use Frost in that extent, Frost literally shows up, knocks Krillin off, and then leaves. Could we have maybe a little bit of a confrontation there with Frost? You know how well that would work, right? Krillin fighting against Frost. Krillin fighting against the Universe 6 counterpart of the guy that blew him the fuck up. I think Krillin would have a little bit of a grudge there, and that would also show development into Frost's character, you know? Like, hey, okay, Krillin's been training. He's got all these tricks up his sleeve. He's ready to show them off. Oh, here comes Frost. You know, he was a disgraced warrior from Universe 6. He's, he's, he's abandoned all of his dirty tricks. He's tried to get stronger just on his own merit. Let's see how they go. Frost trying to redeem himself, trying something new for the first time without dirty tricks. Krillin, always the underdog, always being pushed down by his peers, always thinking he's not strong, coming up with all these clever moves. You don't think that fight would have been fucking cool to see? Because I think that'd be fucking cool to see. But no, we, we don't get that. Yeah, I mean, this is the reason I didn't talk about it, you know? I didn't talk about it right when it was released because the, this was this was pretty much my immediate thoughts. And I thought if I gave it, like, alright, I'll, I'll, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. I sent out a tweet today, like, hey, do you guys still want me to talk about this? And people were like, yeah, talk about this. And I'm like, alright, maybe I'll try to, maybe I've simmered down a little bit. I'm going to have a better way of presenting this. But no, it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, eight. I mean, look, for the majority of the episode, it's awesome. It's cool. You see Krillin in 18, you see Krillin in Master Roshi. You know, you, you get to see him fighting, and it's pretty damn sweet. It is pretty cool. But the end just fucking ruins it, you know? It's like, you could be watching the best movie ever. Oh man, this is so cool, the plot's so intrinsic, and all the characters are so interesting. And then you make it to the last 15 minutes, and if the last 15 minutes everybody just dies. Be like, well that just ruined the picnic. You know? Man. Well, Krillin's gone now, so it doesn't matter. I guess we're gonna move on to 18. Um, which is cool. I like 18, I like me some 18 action. We actually get to see a scene with her and 17 in this episode that's actually pretty funny. Uh, where, uh, you know, 17's like, you seem a little cranky, and 18's like, you do know if we lose, the entire universe gets erased, and 17's like, eh. We get erased, at least we get erased together. It, it all happens at once, you know? It's not like I have to watch my wife and kids die, it's like it all happens at once, so, you know, whatever. So, um, they mention that, hey, you know, by the way, we also have infinite key. Oh yeah, we have that infinite key generator thing. Maybe we should use that. Yeah, let's use that. So that was cool. Um, there was a scene where 18 was fighting against this dude who plays dead, who f pretends to die, and everyone's really, like, nervous for a second after 18, like, kicks his fucking neck open. And it's like, oh shit, is he dead? Did we lose? The Grand Priest, and I would assume the Grand Priest and Zeno and everybody, I'm assuming they would know immediately if they died or not, like, if that person's actually faking, so they don't even get involved, but whatever. Uh, some other, other little notes from the episode. Uh, well, we get to see a scene with, uh, Mojito again. Mojito's just chilling out there. Remember, his God of Destruction was eliminated, and he did not turn dormant. So that makes that seems to me like uh, the Grand Priest wants to do something with the Angels, since they're not going dormant. Um, you know? 
Uh, and, oh, by the way, people have been saying, you know, the reason Mojito was smiling, the reason he didn't give a shit is because nobody liked Ro or Sidra anyway. Nobody cared about them. Yeah, okay, Ro was a bastard. Everyone know Ro was a freaking horrible fucking Supreme Kai. He was a horrible son of a bitch. Sidra, Sidra was kind of, like, lazy. As a god of destruction, he didn't really in in invite a lot of terror. But he wasn't a bad guy. I didn't look at Sidra like he was like, oh my god, Sidra's such an asshole. You know, Ro was the asshole. Sidra just seemed kind of like a meek sort of god of destruction. But then also you have to figure the entire universe got wiped out. Like, you know, like uh, putting Ro and Sidra aside, Mojito's like, yep, everything in my universe is gone. <laughs> you know, seems a little bit dubious to me. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, there's a moment where Supreme Kai is, uh, you know, kind of concerned there. You know, he's, uh, Shin, you know, from Universe 7. I guess I should clarify which Supreme Kai at this point. Uh, very concerned there. Um, you have Beerus, on the other hand, though, who's, uh, rooting on Vegeta. Vegeta has a little confrontation between Botamo and Magetta. Remember, Magetta's whole weakness is that, uh, he's, uh, weak to insults. So, you know, Vegeta just breaks out every- he was like, You tin-plated rust-bucket piece of shit! And, uh, the, the big counter that they have now is that Magetta and Botamo can combine together. Not fusion. I know, that would have been cool. But Botamo literally just covers up Magetta's metal ears. Alright. And then they just, like, sit on... And Botamo just sits on top of his head. And they are the, the perfect beings. So we'll see how long that's gonna last. Until Vegeta just final flashes them both off the freaking arena. We'll see how that goes. Frieza has a cool moment. Frieza has an awesome moment where he's looking up at Zeno after he erases Universe 9, and Frieza's just like, hmm, so those little brats have the ultimate power of all universes. Hmm, I'm gonna enjoy showing them up. Like, Frieza's, like, having ideas of grandeur, you know? Frieza's like, uh, he, you know, you can imagine how pissed off Frieza is, like, oh, those are the supreme gods of everything. Seriously. Those are the ones that are even, like, even, even the gods of destruction are terrified of. You're fucking serious. Those two little brats up there. I am going to fuck with them. You know, that's Frieza's mind, you know. It's probably gonna end up him getting knocked right into oblivion, but, you know, it's Frieza. <sighs> Man. Oh, well. Um, there's not really much else to add in the episode, except... Guess what, guys? We're now three episodes into the Tournament of Power. We got a time frame on this. Five minutes. 40, oh, no, is it five minutes or six minutes? I think it's 42 or 43 minutes, whatever. 48 minutes total in the tournament. We're now down to, like, 42 or 43. Yeah, so five or six minutes. The uh, pillar goes down one level, which means that ten talks have passed out of the hundred talks. So we're one-tenth of the way there. Three episodes. All right, well, we're going to see how this goes. Obviously, this is going to get more intense as it plays out, because you're going to get rid of all the riffraff first. You're going to have all the battles like, oh, okay, Vegeta's got to fight Botamo and Magetta. That's going to be goofy. All the freaking other, you know, the, the random people that nobody gives a shit about. Eventually, this is going to be whittled down to, like, you know, Vegeta, Goku, Hits, uh, Jiren, Topo, Gohan, probably... Uh, we're gonna have probably the Sailor Moon chubby girl from Universe 2, probably somebody from, like, Universe 4, um, oh, by the way, from Universe 4, we seem to see, like, a shadow figure, like, one of the ones that are hiding in the, in the, in the, behind the scenes, which is funny because Zeno has his god pad thing, and it has all the members, and yet it still doesn't show the ones that aren't there, so that's weird that even the god pad doesn't show it, but whatever. Um, you know, it's eventually gonna be knocked down to the strongest members, and we're just gonna, it's gonna be intense from that point onward. You know, we know Goku's gonna fight Jiren, we know Vegeta's gonna fight against that Teletubby Sailor Moon chick, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's gonna be other really strong fighters, like Topo's, of course, probably gonna be there. People have been throwing out, like, Hit versus Jiren, how would that go? That seems fun. I mean, let, let's talk about Hit, because... You know, Hit was, like, the main attraction in Universe 6, you know, because he was the guy that was like, oh, he's the mysterious badass. But now we have Jiren as the mysterious badass, and Hit can show up and be like, hey, you taking my thunder? And I could totally see Hit fighting Jiren and having Jiren come out on top, and then Goku's like, whoa. All right, now it's more, it's a little bit personal, you know, because Goku and Hit, like, Goku's like, yeah, Hit's the guy, he's like my new rival, he's the guy that's like stronger than I am, I really have to test my metal against, but then if, if Jiren, I mean, it would be an awesome fight, hit against Jiren, you know, full frontal, maybe we'll get a whole episode on that, 
And then after that, Goku's like, whoa, all right. You know, I, I got a new rival boner now. And then Vegeta's like, oh, damn it, Kakarot. And he's like, I'm sorry, man. I got to go with it. He's a gray guy and he beat the shit out of hit. We got to have something here. I also think there's the, uh, the, the Frieza versus Frost fight. Of course, that's got to happen. I mean, that's just, that's just set in stone right there. I mean, that has to occur. Hey, maybe at some point during that fight, we'll find out what the name of Frieza's species is. If it's anything but Frost Demons, fuck you. All right, well, anyway, I think I've gone on long enough about this. This is more of a rant than an episode review, but whatever. It's how I thought about it, so there you go. Presented to you in glorious cringe definition. All right, well, you guys have a good night. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Teching 101, signing out.